So now we have all of our basic functionality for opening a website, going through a series of pages, and extracting information from that page. And the last thing I'm going to cover is how to store that data into a text file so you can get that into a data format um, outside of Python. And to do that, there's uh, many ways, but the easiest way is to use uh, the file functions within Python. So what I'm going to do here is in the beginning of my code, so again if you remember these are my functions that I'm using for my code and this is the actual code that I'm going to run uh, for my script. So at the beginning of that script I'll specify a new variable called file name and I'll give it the name uh, records.txt and this will just store the name that I want to use for my file and now using that, I'm going to um, create a file. So this is the variable that holds my actual file. And then I'm going to use the Python command open. I'm going to pass it the name that I want for my file. So that's file name. And I want to specify what I want to do with that file. So here I'm going to say w because I want to create that file and I want, I want to write to that file. And the first thing I'll do with this file is basically add a line that specify which categories I'm going to have. So this will be the first row of the file and it's just going to have my category names. So for that I'll make a new string. I'll call it categories and then I'm going to just say name and number of reviews. Between those two I'm going to put what's called a delimiter and I'm going to use a pipe here. So the delimiter is just a way to store data and text files to separate out entries by columns. A, a typical way is to use uh, a comma, so that creates a comma separated values file, or CSV, which you might have heard of. Uh, other people use semicolons. In this case, because our names might contain a lot of different types of characters, they might contain semicolons and commas, we're going to use the pipe, which is pretty rarely used in text, so it's a pretty safe delimiter to use. Okay, and once we have that category, we can basically call the file and the write function and write those categories to that file. Okay, so this will basically create that file, uh, write this line to that file, and once we're done with the file, we can uh, close it by calling the file's close function. So just to see how this works, I'm going to comment this out and just run this piece of code. So once that's run, you can go to the directory where your code is, and it should make a file in that directory. So here it is, the records file. If you open that up into a text editor, you can see that's written that first line of code. And from here, you can import it into Excel and specify Excel to split the columns by this delimiter. Okay, so now that we have this functionality, I can use it to store the results coming out of my website as my script runs. So I'll comment out the rest of our code. I'll get rid of this close because we don't want to close the file right away. And one thing I'll do real quick is within this category, each time I add a line uh, to the file, I need to also write in this backslash n. And this is basically will tell uh, the file to create a return on the file. Because if you don't do this, it'll just add a continuous string to your uh, text instead of adding rows. So this will just go basically to the next row. So now I want to put in this file reading and writing into my code each time it reads uh, a certain amount of data. So in my fetch items function, and this is the function that basically gets all of the items from a specific page. So each time it gets those items, I want to basically append to a string file. I'm going to create first a blank string file called listing and double quotes will basically create an empty string and each time I run the extract data function you can see here it creates all the data and prints it out so instead of just printing it to the console I want to actually write it into a string file and in order to do that I'm basically going to from this function return a string that has the data from that uh, specific uh, listing. So here I'm going to return the name first. So we have this name variable. And then I'm going to add a pipe delimiter into here. And then I'm going to add num reviews, which is my second 
piece of data that I want. And finally, I'm going to end with a return, so that backslash n. So this string, which is a line of, of data in my database, I'm going to return out of this extract data function that's called here. So this function will now actually return a value. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, every time I call this, return that value and add it uh, at the same time to my listing string. So here I can say listing plus equals extract data. So if you follow this logic, it basically creates a blank string and calls for each listing calls this extract function, which returns a string and adds it to that listing. Okay, and this is basically kind of a shortcut to automatically add the results of a function to this ongoing listing. And the next thing I will do is save that file uh, every time that one of these pages has been extracted. And I don't have to do this, I can just keep writing to it and then save all at the very end once I got all the listings. But because some of these uh, websites have many, many pages, you kind of want to save and close and then reopen the file every time you go to a new page, just to make sure that if something crashes that you have the data you've gotten before. Because if you don't close the file at some point, uh, Python will basically not save any of that file. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, after this is run and gotten all the listings for that site, I'm going to close, I'm going to write that listing to the file. This is the exact same thing uh, we did here while we wrote the categories. So this will add that string to that file, but it won't write to the actual file on your system yet. Okay, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is here after I call fetch items and it's gone through this whole function and wrote the listings to the file, I'm going to actually close that file. So within here, I say f.close, I close that file, and then I basically reopen it to write more to it. So I do the same uh, syntax as before, f.open, I have my file name parameter, and now I specify a because instead of just writing to it, I want to read it in first and then write to it. So a is read write. And this will ensure that I won't make a new file like I did in the beginning. It won't overwrite the file. If the file exists, it'll open the file that's there and then start writing to the end of that file. And then just so I know what's going on, I'm going to add a little note to myself. I'm going to say after this is all done, I'm going to say that the page of that index has completed. So whatever this k is, it goes from zero to the number of pages. I'm going to add a note. It says when that page is done. So I realized there's a mistake here. I have a duplicate variable of listing. So I'll actually change my string to entry here and here. And the last thing I need to do is I need to actually close the document once this whole script is run. So the document is closing and reopening every time before it does the next loop. But after all the loops are done, I actually need to close this document to make sure uh, that Python closes the very last iteration. And now if I run this, it should start to iterate through our pages. It'll print out the results here, but it'll also save them to a file each time. And we can go to where we have our script. So I wouldn't open the file like this because Python is actually constantly opening and reading and writing to this file. So to see what is going on so far, you can select the file and copy and paste to create this copy and now you can open it up. You can see in this text file, it's storing every one of these attractions. So here's the header with our names and then each attraction with a number of reviews. And if we let this run for a while until it goes through every page, then we can open up the final document and I'll show you how to import it into Excel.